Hello everyone. Today's topic is Mandela's. Now, to be more precise, I'm going to talk about photo Mandela's. You may be familiar with the traditional Mandela's, uh, such as a San Mandela or this type of Mandela. But the photo Mandela was something that I developed um, over a period of time, and I'll explain a bit more about that later. The literal meaning of the word Mandela is circle. And now, circle is very uh, significant, and it's a powerful uh, symbol within various religions, traditions, myths, and legends. Simply put, the symbol is the connection between self and the universe at large. Within popular, cult within popular culture, the Mandela has been a, a means of meditating, a, a way of silencing your thoughts, opening up our senses to the beauty of uh, nature, and, and above all, it, literally, it can lower your stress and anxiety levels. My photo Mandelas are not meant to be a copy of traditional Mandelas. I found that when I was photographing within nature, the act of photographing within nature was very meditative to me. And I wanted to find a way to present some of what I felt when I was photographing in, in, a, in a photograph of some sort, rather than just a straight picture of photographs. I wanted to put it together in a, a different way to provide a different kind of experience for the viewer. So the photo Mandela's was something that I developed out of that. And here's a couple of examples of the photo Mandela's that I've done, and I'll show you more examples in the slideshow that's to follow. This is printed on metal. There might be some reflection off of this, but you can see that uh, this is what it looks like. And then this is another uh, example of a photo Mandela. Again, a bit of reflection here because of the metal. But I'll show you other examples in the slide presentation. And uh, I'll talk a bit more about it then. And then just say a few words to you at the end. But uh, let's go on to the slide presentation. And this is an image of a traditional Mandela. You'll see the circle in the center, surrounded by the larger circle, and a lot of other images within the large circle that create all these colorful patterns, very much like the patterns that you see in nature. This is another view of the Mandela being worked on, the San Mandela. There's a lot of components to the Mandela, and the, I always found it inspiring to look at because it was such a, a beautiful thing and it had all these little parts to it that created the larger image. You can see it starting out in the center. It starts out at the very center and works its way out to the larger circle. And you can see the very center portion here with the eight portions coming out from it. And then from that, it, it builds on that. So the inspiration of the Mandela was something that I wanted to transfer over into my experiences with photographs. So here is an example of an early photo Mandela that I did. I took a plant and took a portion of it and pasted it back together into this sort of triangular shape and put it within the circle. And I wanted to play around too with a lot of other images and colors. This was at a house that we stayed at in Hawaii that had a lot of greenery growing around it. And I liked the horizontal lines, and I thought by making a mirrored image of it, it would create a, a view that was something like this, which I just like. I also worked with colors, shapes, and wanted to see what they would look like in horizontal and rectangular images, as well as images such as this, very much looking like a Christmas decoration, but I like the colors, the fluorescent green and yellow, and put this together to create this view. And then leaves of a plant, took a portion of it and couple of portions of the plant and pasted them together in this way to give this woven sort of effect. And again, I wasn't quite sure how it would come out in the 
finished image, but it was fun to work with to create something different from the original. Ferns were something that I've always liked working with. I've found that ferns fascinated me because of the fact that they are one of the oldest plants in the world, that they survived the extinction of the dinosaurs. So that alone created an, an interest to me. So I took ferns and put them together in configurations such as this, and then having them point inwards to create a, a woven basket kind of effect. And then slowly I started to move on to flowers and putting flowers together in various configurations. It started out with fairly simple designs and then started to work into designs that were somewhat more complex and would be several images taken from the original and put together into another type of shape. This was against a lighter background. I finally settled on putting the flowers and plants against a black background because I like the suspended in air kind of feeling that it gave. And it allowed you to focus on the details of the flowers and plants rather than being distracted by colors in the background. And when you look at these images, you might see some faces and shapes. Depending on your life experiences and the way that you look at things generally, you're going to see different things than somebody else might. So here's something that a bit more complex, more pieces uh, taken apart and reconstructed into a finished sort of view. Again, more shapes and more of a, a round feel of this plant. Less round, but almost looked like, to me, eyes on either side of this. Some of the plants started to take on a sort of human-like view to me when I looked at them. Again, it's going to be different so depending on your experiences and background. This particular plant I liked because of the two different textures, the very white sort of smooth texture and then the fuzzy sort of texture in the middle. And I would take different plants and some of the same plants and put them together to create another kind of plant. This one I liked, uh, that little talking flower, as I thought it looked like a, a mouth in the center of this plant, and it gave it, a, to me, an animated kind of feel when I look at it. But again, to someone else, it uh, may be uh, another experience that you might have. I never quite knew how things would come together when I took parts of plants and put them back together in a, another configuration. And this is an example of something that I never quite expected, this diamond shape in the center, sort of a sideway square or diamond shape. It uh, was something that I couldn't quite predict ahead of time. I was pleasantly surprised when it was put together. Same, same flower, but in um, uh, um, another configuration creates a totally different feel again. More of a, a rectangular shape to it and the same plant in, in, in a square sort of shape. Almost like a I look at it and it looks like a, a lunar module landing on the moon. This one I particularly liked just because of the fluorescent colors in the center and, and the delicateness of the 
center and the outer proportions of it gave it a, um, a very interesting kind of view. One of the pieces, as they became more complex, this one might have consisted of, I think, about eight different portions that I would take apart from a plant and put together to create a new plant. And this is, uh, this is an example of one of the ones that started to develop into more complex structures. This one is kind of a hybrid in a sense. It's sort of like the um, photo ink blots in a way, but uh, kind of Mandela-ish in its feel. But uh, when I looked at this, I was I, I sort of had to laugh because it looked like a, a bit of an angry insect to me uh, with the face and the antennas uh, coming up from its head. And then some of the things just made me smile. And I, I looked at this one when I was working with the red plants. Uh, it, it came across looking like masks or faces. And, and to me, this looked like a, it looked like a, a, a face with pieces of straw that they had in their mouth or parts of another plant. And I kind of looked at it and it, it just seemed amusing to me. And so the same plant in a, another configuration gives a, another view of, of the plant, another mask, and a little smaller, other configurations, other shapes and textures. The purple plants that I worked on, I, I liked. They, uh, I was able to create some circular feels in the center with this, and it felt as if some of these things could kind of revolve. It seemed like it was on a, a stick in the middle, and the, the center part could revolve like a twirly sort of thing in the middle of the uh, circle. And this one I, I liked. Um, it was like a dancing kind of plant to me with uh, dancers happening around the outer edges of the uh, circle of the particular Mandela, of this Mandela. And the interesting thing about the Mandelas too when I was working on them is I would work on them in a certain way and I would have a fairly clear idea as to the, 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 the bottom and top of it, but then there were some of them that you could turn upside down and they would look different or you could turn sideways. This was an example of one of the ones that I worked on that this was the way that originally I saw it, but then I, I moved it on its side and it looked, it looked like this. So here it is the way I originally looked at it, and then I moved it sideways. It created, to me, something that felt very different, but it was the same image, just turned sideways. And this one, too, is one of my favorites. It's printed on, I have it printed on metal, and to me it felt as if these were dancers that are around the outer edges, and it it had a, a, a whirly sort of motion kind of feel to it uh, when I looked at it. And, I, and again, hope it's something that others might like and look at the details in it. It had quite a bit in the way of details. So we come back to my ferns again. These are ferns that are in Hawaii that are on the edge of a, a dormant volcano, a sort of semi-dormant volcano. There's uh, steam vents that are still happening there, and <clears throat> the fumes coming up from these steam vents are quite toxic, and uh, I only thought of this afterwards because we were there photographing, but uh, you could see how some of the plants have uh, died off the ferns within this very hostile kind of environment, but there are other ferns that are surviving quite well. Some plants that would die off and the others would grow up in uh, the spots in, in amongst all these dying plants. And to give you an idea of how 
these plants could survive, how the ferns could survive under harsh conditions. So I took, these are two very healthy looking plants in that same sort of uh, scene here. You could see plants like this that were very healthy looking. So I took these uh, two ferns, the orange and the green, and I, I put it together into this kind of configuration. And I was quite fascinated with it because I have no idea as to how it could curve around like this, but it, it created interesting kinds of effects to me that <clears throat> I couldn't first see until it was done. This went to this. And within this Mandela, there were these hearts that were uh, within the larger hearts on the outer edges. You see the smaller hearts within the uh, large hearts. And uh, there were other things that were happening in it that were interesting too. The hearts were pointing towards the center of the photo Mandela, as were the ferns on the outer corners point inwards to the uh, center of the Mandela. And in the very center of this uh, photo Mandela is a, a compass type shape in the in the center with the northeast west uh, um, north south east west kind of compass in the center and again something I couldn't quite see before uh, the finished image and the St. George's Cross was in the, the that shape was in the very center of this photo Mandela too I'll show you it to you on this superimposed picture next so the St. George's Cross looks like this and it's the very shape of the center of the uh, photo Mandela and here's the finished view. So that's the uh, presentation on photo Mandela's and I hope you enjoyed it and uh, get an idea of maybe looking at nature around you in a slightly different way. Thank you. Mm -hmm.